you are most welcome. Now, I've been getting quite a few emails and um, messages from people that are quite concerned about new Australian research that seems to show that the virus can survive for 28 days outside the body. So what is this and how concerned should we be? Well, just to give you the bottom line, if you don't want to watch this video, yes, the research does show that in 20, 20 degrees centigrade in the dark, the virus can survive for up to 28 days in doses which are capable of causing infection. But on the other side, the Centre for Disease Control and other evidence we'll look at suggests that this form of direct contact, what we can call fomites, things that are... So it's a fomite if it's like um, a pen or a, a phone or, or a surface. It's getting from someone coughs it out onto a surface, onto the phone, onto their pen. You can touch it with your hands and then it can go into your mouth. That, that, is, that is a fomite transmission through direct physical surfaces. So the Centre for Disease Control and this other research shows it's not the main modality of spread. The main modality of spread is person to person with the droplets and the aerosols that were only just recently admitted by the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control. So that's kind of the bottom line there is, uh, is yes, it is true. Am I particularly worried about it? Does it change a lot of things? No. Does it mean we should still carry on with our hygiene of surfaces and hand washing? Of course. But let, let's look at the, the information now in more detail. Um, it is quite interesting the way that uh, understanding has evolved over the last few months as regards to the survival of the virus outside the body. So stability of SARS coronavirus 2 in different environments. Now this goes back, we looked at this study at the time, I remember doing it in detail, uh, from The Lancet back, way back in April. And it says that SARS coronavirus 2 is more stable on smooth surfaces as opposed to textiles. So that made sense, still does. Uh, no infectious virus could be detected on smooth surfaces on uh, after four days. So this was saying after four days, glass and banknotes and stainless steel, I think they looked at as well, the virus couldn't be detected after four days. In other words, the virus survived for three days because on the fourth day it wasn't, it wasn't detectable, is what that research said back in April. And that's what's been countermanded by this more up-to-date research from Australia. Um, overall, SARS coronavirus 2 can be highly stable in favourable environments. Yes, that's true. They thought up to three or four days. But it's susceptible to standard disinfection methods. Now, we've done this many times, but it's always worth doing again. The outer coat of the virus is fatty. You break it down with simple soap and water. Or 60% alcohol will also kill the virus. And on surfaces, most of the standard disinfectants that we use for surfaces will also kill the virus. If you're unsure, look at the manufacturer's recommendations. And if it says it kills viruses, then we can assume it kills viruses. Right, so this new research then, what, what's changed here? The effect of temperature on uh, persistence of SARS coronavirus 2 on common surfaces. A virology journal, 7th of October. Good quality research, Australian Centre for Disease Preparedness in Victoria, in Australia, of course, who have quite an interest in this at the moment, published in the journal of this virology journal here. Now, they had good supplies of the actual virus. So they had collaborators who supplied them with the actual virus, supplies of the actual virus, and they knew the quantities that they were applying to surfaces as well. So they had the virus and they had quantities of the virus and known quantities of the virus. And of course, in laboratory conditions, you can actually and accurately control all of the environmental circumstances. So that's what they were doing. The rate at which uh, um, COVID-19 has spread through the world has been alarming, they say. Well, yeah, OK, we knew that. Um, but of course, they're looking for ways to explain that, which, of course, is what science does. It really seeks to explain the role of fomite transmission, that surfaces and pens, uh, is not yet fully understood. Absolutely, it's not. Uh, the risk of fomite transmission, uh, the, the risk of fomite transmission from contaminated surfaces, is there, but again, is not that clearly understood. So this is what they were trying to, to further this to look at this in more detail. 
So this study measured the survival rate of uh, SARS coronavirus 2, which I missed off there. <laughs> oh no, it's there, on several common surface types. So they're looking at it in different surfaces. Now, I think this is quite important to notice. All these studies were done in the dark because it's well accepted that ultraviolet light has antiviral properties and will break down the genetic material of the virus. So if the virus is in bright sunlight, that will have strong antiviral effects. So these experiments with the ultraviolet would only work in the shade or preferably in the dark, like on the undersurfaces where a surface was exposed to ultraviolet light, these, light, these results would not be applicable because it was all done in the dark. So it's a bit experimental really, but it's good to remind ourselves that uh, sunlight will kill the virus, which is always good to know. Now at 20 degrees centigrade, the half-life of the virus was 1.7 to 2.7 days. So in other words, it's just over two days, typical half-life. Now what a half-life means, if you have, let's suppose you have a thousand viral particles to begin with, and the half-life is two days, then in two days time you'll have 500. In another two days time you'll have 250. In another two days time you'll have 125. In another two days time you'll have um, 770, whatever, 100 and half of 65 or whatever half of 125 is. Uh, 62.5 I think. Okay so it goes down like that but the point is um, even although the number is halving, the number of the virus is halving every couple of days, the amount of virus that can still be surviving after 28 days can still be enough to cause infection. That is the point and they were able to quantify this really quite, exa uh, quite accurately. Viral loads equivalent to the highest teeters excreted by infective individuals. So these were the viral loads that they applied experimentally to the surfaces they were examining. So if someone was badly infected, uh, they coughed or sneezed, that amount of virus that went onto a surface, that's the kind of amount of virus that they were using, the, the highest teeters excreted by infected patients. So again, we see this is a, an upper limit that they're talking about here. But it's good that they could do this quantitatively. They, could, they, they were able to, uh, they knew the amount of virus they were putting onto these surfaces. A viable virus was isolated up to 28 days at 20 degrees centigrade in the dark with no ultraviolet from common surfaces such as glass, stainless steel. And this one did surprise me. Paper banknotes as well as polymer banknotes. I was surprised it could survive for as long on paper. That was a surprise finding. And of course, you might remember that back in February, I think it was February or March, the Chinese government took all banknotes out of circulation and either disinfected them or burnt them and replaced them. I can't remember which. Um, so that's a, that's an interesting one. <clears throat> um, so banknotes there, certainly a possibility of spread. Okay, so that was at 20 degrees centigrade, temperate. But 40 degrees centigrade, so 40 degrees centigrade is like 100 degrees Fahrenheit or something. So th this, is, this is quite hot temperatures now. Um, but of course, it's not, it's not a sim simple cutoff. It's not 20 degrees survives for 28 days, 40 degrees survives for 24 hours. Um, which is roughly what it is, there's a gradual reduction of uh, viral viability. So the virus will survive for quite a long time at 20, less time at 25, less time at 30, less time at 35, even less time at 40. And it's not reported in this study, which is interesting, but previous studies have shown that the virus survives best actually way down at about 5 degrees centigrade, just 5 degrees above freezing. So anyway, they, they, this is what they were done at. They were done at 20 and 40 in this study. So that's that's what we know. Uh, down to 24 hours, so dramatically down. And of course, we do notice that the virus didn't spread very prolifically in Vietnam in the summertime or Thailand in the summertime, where the temperatures are in the, in the 30s. Is this a factor? Potentially a factor. The main factor 
we believe is is that they're limited spread from person to person by droplets and aerosols. So, but this could be a minor factor. Having said that, we're not really sure. It, it, it's it's probably not as big a factor as the direct person to person is, is is what we're saying. We can't really be scientific about this at the moment. There's not really sufficient data there. So if SARS coronavirus two can remain infectious for slightly longer time periods than generally considered. Sorry, significantly longer time periods than generally considered possible. So this study is is actually saying, well, no, just a minute. Um, th th this is a possible mode of transmission. Much more than people think, significantly longer than people had thought. Is this is this a bigger mode of transmission than we thought? Still think probably not, but, but it, it could be. It's probably not as important as the droplets, but it it's, it's could be significant. These results could be used to inform improved risk mitigation procedures to prevent the fomite spread of COVID-19 is the conclusion of these authors. So we have um, conflict, not conflicting scientific opinion here, but, but certainly different scientific groups are putting different emphasis on different aspects of transmission. I think that's fair to say. Now, way back in July, there was an interesting article, um, exaggerated risk of transmission from COVID-19 by fomites. And just a few quotes from that article. It's, it was a letter, but in the opinion of the writer, the chances of transmission through inanimate surfaces was very small. Where an infected person coughs or sneezes on a surface and someone else touches that surface uh, within an hour or two, then they could become infected. So this shows the importance of wearing masks in public, doesn't it? it ties in quite nicely. So coughing, sneezing, and, and by extension, singing or talking loudly over a surface. Um, this, or, this author is thinking that infection could take place via the hands of an uninfected person within one to two hours. But he hedges his bets. Um, I do not disagree with erring on the side of caution. Um, although periodic, uh, periodically disinfecting surfaces and the use of gloves are reasonable precautions in hospitals. Now, to get the latest on this, go to the Centres for Disease Control. This is their website here. I was going to go to it, but it's a bit boring just reading through websites. So I'll just summarise what it was saying. Now, we know that recently, well, we know about a month ago, the Centres for Disease Control said aerosolisation is a mode of transmission. Then they took it off the website, said it was posted in error. Now it's back on. So obviously, we know the close contact and the droplet infection. That's considered by virtually everyone to be the main mode of infection. This direct, relatively close contact within three, four, five, six feet, one or two meters, direct droplets from my mouth into your mucous membranes. Uh, my mouth and nose into your mucous membranes, probably the main mode of transmission. But now everyone is admitting that the aerosolization is also a mode of transmission. Of course, as you probably know, these are the lighter particles. The bigger droplets dry out. They form light, small particles that can be suspended in the air for hours and can diffuse through a room especially if there's poor ventilation. This is why you and I know that ventilation is absolutely vital. So it's droplets first, aerosolization, and they do admit that it can be spread by fomites, but they think that the direct contact via the air are the main modalities of spread. And the Centers for Disease Control also said that spread from animals to humans is unlikely. Now, I know the initial virus did spread from animals to humans. It's a zoonotic spillover infection. But what the Centers for Disease Control is saying, we don't need to worry too much about our cats and our dogs infecting other humans. So there we go. It's primarily a droplet aerosolized infection, but fomite risk is important. So this still applies. We still disinfect surfaces. We still wash our hands, even although we know that the direct contact through the droplets and the aerosolization is probably the greater modality of spread. So 28 days sounds an alarming number. It was laboratory conditions. It was in the dark. There was no ultraviolet light there. <clears throat> but 
Um, I, I think this still means that we've got a lot to learn, but we still do need to be very careful about our hygiene. So the reason I'm not too worried about this move up from three days to 28 days is if we're in a public place, we don't know whether a surface was contaminated five minutes ago, two hours ago, two weeks ago. I mean, I mean we, we don't know. So we have to practice universal precaution. So if we've been in public places, when we come back in, thorough hand washing using all the movements that we've uh, learned many times for proper cleaning of the hands uh, is still uh, advisable. So although this is theoretically interesting, it doesn't change practically really what we've been doing because we still practice these universal hygiene precautions. So the, the, the practicalities haven't really changed that much. Uh, but it's certainly interesting and I do suspect there is probably more to come on this. So that's just, just a brief update on that. Um, not overly worried, but interesting to know. All knowledge is useful when it comes to this pandemic. Thank you for watching as always.